Welcome to our video. With great power crisis comes great power opportunity. The war in Ukraine should prompt a new opening to China. I would like tentatively to share the insights and analysis by Mr. Francis J. Gavin, Giovanni Agnelli Distinguished Professor and Director of the Henry A. Kissinger Center for Global Affairs at Johns Hopkins University's School of Advanced International Studies. His commentary originally appeared in the Foreign Affairs dated June 9, 2022. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the responses of the United States and China, has generated the first great power crisis in decades. Such crises are rare and terrifying, especially in the nuclear age. Understandably, therefore, countries go to great lengths to avoid them. But great power crises can produce an unexpected benefit, insight into the balance of power among states, as well as their interests and resolve. Acting as a truth-teller for world politics, crises undermine myths, expose weaknesses, and surface underlying strengths. They force countries and their leaders to interrogate long-held policies and update their postures based on new realities. A country that believes its position is excellent might discover that it is in fact exposed or overextended, and a less confident country might discover underappreciated strengths. Great power crises also promise something else. The opportunity for states that come out on top to reorder global relations in ways that provide long-term stability. This outcome is not automatic or even likely. Crises are dangerous, uncertain, and easily devolve into deeper confrontations. But through enlightened statesmanship, savvy diplomacy, and strategic patience, it is possible for winning states to reshape the global order to their advantage without humiliating their adversaries. The United States did this after the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. When U.S. President John F. Kennedy's administration emerged looking both stronger and more resolute than the Soviets but did not push its advantage, instead planting the seeds of détente. Now, the United States has the opportunity to do so again in the aftermath of the crisis in Ukraine. Russia's war has starkly, if surprisingly, demonstrated that Washington's standing in the world is stronger than previously assumed. Moscow's flaws have been exposed. Perhaps more consequentially, the crisis has revealed that China's position vis-a-vis -vis the United States is weaker than many thought. U.S. President Joe Biden will be tempted to exploit these newfound advantages, to draw attention to Chinese problems and highlight American advantages. He should resist that temptation. Recognize that China isn't Russia, and quietly explore whether new global realities allow for a mutually beneficial accommodation with China. Skeptics will reasonably counter that accommodation is unwise. China has not softened its rhetoric nor condemned Russia's war. It has demonstrated scant interest in compromise, especially over the most contentious and dangerous of issues, Taiwan. Accommodation might require the United States to de-emphasize important priorities such as human rights. It could generate understandable consternation among U.S. allies and outrage domestically. The best an accommodation could achieve, moreover, is a seemingly desultory goal. A return to where U.S.-Chinese relations were at the start of the 21st century when both countries committed to avoid great power war despite fundamental disagreements. The United States must therefore be clear-eyed about what this strategy can and cannot accomplish. It cannot make a friend or an ally of China. A country whose ideology and ambitions guarantee some level of competition or rivalry with the United States. But it can do something even more important. Avoid the looming catastrophe of a direct war between superpowers and possibly create the conditions for limited cooperation on pressing global issues, such as climate change, nuclear proliferation, and pandemics. Simply seeking to deter China without endeavoring to engage it is an uncertain and dangerous strategy. 
Washington should seize the opportunity created by the crisis in Ukraine to chart a safer and more prudent path. The world looks much different today than it did on February 23, 2022. Prior to its invasion of Ukraine, Russia's conventional military, backed by the world's largest nuclear arsenal, appeared invincible. Moscow controlled enormous energy resources needed by much of the world and possessed cyber tools and disinformation capabilities that many thought were unparalleled. Russia received warm support from a powerful and focused China, whose increasing economic and political strength seemed magnified by its successful COVID-19 policies. The United States, by contrast, looked feckless after its ignominious withdrawal from Afghanistan. Its European allies appeared fractious and unprepared to meaningfully contribute to their own security. Washington's effort to deter Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion failed. And few believed U.S. sanctions would be widely embraced or effective. The liberal order and its ineffectual institutions seemed broken, and authoritarian countries seemed ascendant. Better suited to generate power and exploit the weaknesses of democracies to shape the international system. Fast forward to today, and things look quite different. Although Russia remains a leading nuclear power, its military has been exposed as overrated, its cyber tools and disinformation weapons have been blunted, and its long-term economic future appears bleak. The United States and its allies agreed to a far tougher sanctions package than most analysts expected. Supplemented by increasingly large and lethal arms shipments to Ukraine. NATO is more unified than ever and could be about to welcome Finland and Sweden as new members, a once unthinkable prospect. Even the global narrative about democracy and dictatorship has shifted. Countries that had been unwilling to embrace the Biden administration's adversarial framework, such as Germany and New Zealand, now seem open to accepting this approach. The crisis has also cemented the U.S. dollar's central place in the global economic system and demonstrated the extraordinary market power of American financial and technology companies. With Russia weakened and Europe more committed to its own defense, moreover, Washington can now focus its growing military capabilities on China, whose economic, technological, and public health record seems less impressive than it did even a year ago. The United States and three other democracies with vibrant economies, Australia, India, and Japan, have strengthened their association through the Quad, while the Belt and Road Initiative, China's signature act of global statecraft, has dramatically underperformed. But the war in Ukraine hasn't just revealed unexpected American strengths, it has also exposed Chinese vulnerabilities. China's association with and unwillingness to criticize Russian brutality has harmed its global reputation. Moreover, Russia's military setbacks have forced Chinese military planners to question whether a cross-strait invasion of Taiwan, a more difficult military goal than conquering Ukraine against an arguably harder and better armed adversary, is plausible. And even if China were to succeed in taking Taiwan by force, its reward, like Russia's, might be a full-scale policy of containment by the West, economic and technological decoupling, and exclusion from the international system. Given these dramatic shifts, why should Washington seek accommodation with Beijing, and why would Beijing be interested? Skepticism is warranted. Any overt U.S. effort to suggest that changing global circumstances allow for a new approach to China could alarm Beijing, generate sharp domestic backlash, and confuse U.S. allies. Critics of accommodation, moreover, might be right that the structure of the international system and the nature of each power's regime mean that confrontation and conflict between the world's leading powers is unavoidable. But the critics of accommodation must ask themselves how confident they are in the alternative. Currently, Washington has no long-term strategy for dealing with Beijing aside from deterrence. Will this strategy, which failed against a far weaker Russia, 
succeed against China, and what cost should the United States be prepared to pay if it does not. Deterrence works less well without assurances, and it often succeeds only in buying time. As a strategy, it tells countries what to avoid but says little about where to go or what they should be prepared to live with. Core elements of any good grand strategy in a world of competing interests. Focusing solely on deterrence also risks further escalating tensions between the United States and China. Bilateral relations have already deteriorated to such an extent that conflict is increasingly seen as inevitable in both countries. Short of war, which would be far more ruinous than the current conflict in Ukraine, poor U.S. Chinese relations risk further undermining the international order. The calamitous COVID 19 pandemic, which has killed upward of 15 million people, shows what can happen when the world's two leading powers fail to cooperate. A new U.S. Chinese understanding, focusing narrowly on shared interests and concerns, might help both powers prepare for and respond to the next global crisis.